Hey everybody, it's Jochen Hayden here and I'm back with the Warren Pacific Avril's Edition play by email campaign versus Lodric scenario one. This is February 22nd, 1942, turn 78. So for this turn, I am looking to see what Lodric's going to be doing in the South Pacific near Numea. Obviously, he destroyed one of our uh, destroyers last turn or almost did. Uh, I'll be looking to see what's going on in China near Xi'an and Changsha. Those are the two main areas that I'm looking at. And we'll see if Lodric wants to try poking his carriers out anywhere. We haven't seen him in a while. So let's watch his turn and see if it goes well. Okay, folks, here we go. February 22nd, 1942. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's Kukong. After all that time, he finally took it. Man, it's kind of bittersweet to see it go like that. Oh, dodge this, dodge this. Oh. The Voyager is a very good ASW um, a sub uh, sub killer. Oh, that was a close one. So, the I-10 fires six torpedoes at the Voyager and misses. That's a lot of torpedoes. Uh, this task force has my damaged light cruisers from Numea. That were damaged in the air attack a couple weeks ago uh, in game time, so it would have been bad if one of those had taken a hit. It would have they would have finished them off for sure. But we dodge them. Let's get out of there. Okay, this is our turn to fire. Ah! <sighs> and we get Mark fourteen. Yep, that, of course, right? So we get a hit right off of Sapporo, but we don't get a detonation because Mark 14. Uh, at least we know that he's coming this way, though. And this is also one of the subs that I recently set to move back and forth and not remain stationary. So it, once again, is proof of concept that um, me moving the subs as opposed to having stationary patrol zones seems to be more effective. Let's continue... On. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So it looks like Lodric is going for Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. That's what IO stands for. Christmas Island, Indian Ocean. Because I believe there's one out in the Pacific Ocean as well. So he's looking to grab that base. Ah, Okay. Oh, now he's coming short Osthaven, and I knew that he would. Yeah, this this sounds like standard Lodric to me. So he's landing at Osthaven as well, or Oosthaven. Okay, another landing at Kulion. That's one of the islands near Palawan in the Philippines. And these are totally expected moves. He should be doing this. These are free bases for him to grab. I'm glad to see him actually grabbing bases. Like, these are free bases. Why not, right? Mm hmm. And you'll notice we don't see the ships there because we don't have any naval search to detect them. Okay, here we go. AM phase. We'll be spotting some stuff now. 11 ships of Aval. Oh, check that out. We got some movement into the Indian, into the Bay of Bengal over there. Okay, these are recon flights, it appears, right now. Wow, look at the size of this raid. This is well over 100 bombers here, with a decent sized escort too. He's really hammering down on Sion now. So this was a ground attack. Partial cloud, so I'm expecting some decent casualties from this. Yes, for sure. So he gets a very good uh, ground attack performance today. Um, 
this is clear terrain and the weather's good. So with that many aircraft, it's no, it's no surprise that he um, did that much damage. And you see all these units that are affected. He's going to knock all of these out of out of move mode, which slows us down. Okay. Now he's sending a lot of bombers at these supporting bases because he's trying to keep us from moving reinforcements into Changsha. That's what's going on here. And again, very effective bombing raid. These these terrains have no cover for us at all. Okay, now a raid on Changsha at targeting the airfield. Looks like we did kill one Ann and minor hits to the runway. Honestly, these are not the best aircraft to be using if you're trying to take out an airfield because they just don't carry very big bomb load. As you can see, a single one, a single 250 kilogram is not going to do much. More ants coming in. Hardly any damage. This is really good for us. And I'll explain why later. Okay. Now he's sending these twin engine bombers at the troops reinforcing. Okay. Not too much damage there. The heavy cloud giving us a little bit of cover now. Okay. Then we ground attack in Sion. And he is killing stuff there. When you see the destroyed squads, that's that's bad. All right, that raid was not as effective. My B-17s, I think I forgot to call them off, so they're going in again. I think we're gonna take a lot of flak damage right now. Yeah, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have called this off. So our attack is basically useless because we have to bomb higher because of the rules of this campaign. Um, and we hardly do anything. We take a lot of damage from flag. I'm sure we'll take some ops losses for this. And despite the large bomb load, we just don't do anything. Ah, these B-17s have proven very ineffective thus far uh, attacking ground targets. Okay, that's the AM phase. Pretty quiet. Ooh, okay. There's the vowels. So he's still out there in the uh, south of Numea. Hasn't moved much. Okay, we have some Bettys coming in from Babel. If you, draw, if you connect that line... That's where it's going. He's just trying to slow down the killers of Kagayan because we are on the way back to retake that hex. Okay, now we have additional 20 Bettys coming in from uh, Luzon. He does, he does kill a squad this time. So that's stuff that hurts us more. Disabled, we can get back. Destroyed, we don't. Not without spending money, if you will. Terrapo? What's he looking at Terrapo for? A lot of recon flights. Oh, okay, so this is. What is this? Oh! Oh! He attacked the port again! He attacked the port with 13 vowels, and he basically did nothing to it, but we moved the ships out last turn. So this is a dive bombing attack, as you can see by these release altitudes. They come in high, and then they release low. So this is a dive bombing profile, because these are dive bombers. But he didn't really get anything, because we weren't there. Wow, okay. Oh, oh, one. Two. Three. Four. four. Four transports shot down, confirmed. Others damaged by flak. So it looks like we got a little cap trap action going on. Uh, Lodric there at Terracan. He came in again, and I 
correctly deduced that he would. So I put up a heavy cap this turn, and we intercepted him. I can't wait to see the kills. Uh, on to less good things. Uh, here's the attack on Bandung, and I I think this is going to finish us off. This is, this is going to be a wipeout. All right, let's see. Uh, these Dutch forces at Bandung have proved highly ineffective. If you start seeing a lot of these units disappearing... Well, okay. I, I, I misspoke. Alright, so let's take a look at this. 2588 to 443. But when it runs through the algorithm and does all the checks that it needs to do, it reduces that ratio to this. So we do lose a fortification level from 2 to 1. And the casualties, I'm sure, are going to be pretty extreme. There you go. So he loses two squads destroyed, three total destroyed. We lose way more because, you know, that's, that's really fair. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So we take a lot of casualties here, but we hold. No units are destroyed. Uh, and we live to fight at least one more day at Bandung. Now, ah, there it is. So this is going to cost us a lot of army loss points for sure. But we have one more day to live. Oh, Balak Poppin. We're trying for another one here. Let's see how this goes. Oh, no. Hello, my misguided friends. This is oh, your number one enemy, Lomer. Orphan Anne, from Radio wow, Tokyo. Took it. With another blow to your morale and some music to console you. Today, the Imperial government announced that the ever victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Balik Papan. Hmm. Well, that happened faster than I thought it would. I thought we'd be able to put up a bit of a better fight than that with the fort level of two. Um, but you know, uh, the units that were there were pretty weak. And oh, I think the game crashed. Oh, uh, we're back. Okay, the um, th these numbers can be very misleading, and I have a tutorial coming out soon that will talk about this. So just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean it's gonna equal out to be good when it runs the algorithm through it and all the calculations so um, we take a lot of casualties here we have a total of five units that retreat and one that's completely destroyed and he takes Balak Papin which unfortunately is going to give him access to a significant amount of oil because Samarinda and Balak Papin are our major producers so what we need to see now is like how badly did we damage the base it, did we damage it at all when we left? But yeah, he owned it. So, uh, Lodric did manage to pull this one off. I mean, I thought he came in very light. These units that he brought in are not particularly good, but I guess when you compare them to what I had there, they weren't that great. So, uh, he took it. Now he's going to take Mataram. This is one of the bases that are undefended. They'll get it for free. Yes, that's his. Oh, and the Royal Trash Army is trying again in Malaya. I'm sure we'll have a similar result. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these guys are literally throwing rocks at each other or, uh, you know, calling each other bad names or something because that's look at these casualty reports. Pretty weak. Uh, I expect a similar result here. Right? So they're just cussing at each other. That's all they're doing here. Curling insults. So we continue to hold these rail lines uh, from Singapore. Because Lodric needs to bring something better than the Royal Thai Army to get it done. Oh, Terracan. He's trying again. Can we hold out? Doesn't look like it. Oh, it doesn't look like he's going to take it anyway. Yikes. Look at that. Japanese adjusted assault. 1 to 99. These paratroopers are screwed. Look at this. He shock attacked. 
Oh man, I think we can probably just counter. Uh, I think we can just kind of uh, counterattack and take him out at this point. Look at this. Hmm. So another resounding defeat of Lodric at Terracan between this, the the transports we shot down and his lack of troops here, he's not doing well. Ooh, that's gonna help. Yeah. So these um these base upgrades will help give us a little more points to help offset him taking Balak Poppin, which is worth you know a fair amount as far as I can recall. Oh, cool. We got some refits going down here. These are all ones that I directed. And as we finish up the turn here, we can just take stock of what happened. He took Balak Poppin. He got his butt kicked at Terracan. And we held at Bandung for one more day. That's basically it. And we had a Mark 14 mishap. Okay, did you see that? Looks like we got a uh, another Destroyer Aiden, and that's always good. Getting some additional squadrons coming in here. And some more reinforcements. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, we can use all this stuff. 11th Indian Division at Karachi. All right, cool. Well, let's dive right on into the turn analysis and see what all transpired here. Not a bad turn. Not too bad. Okay. Well, let's talk about the uh, the terror of Terracan, who I would call uh, this guy. Where is he at? Nope, not that guy. This guy. Green Hog. Man, he's slicing the dice and transport planes. Let's look at this turn. All right. So, looking at aircraft losses for this turn, what a slaughter. 22 to 4. We massacred some transport planes today. Lodric, uh, uh, per this, lost 16 Tinas and 3 Sallies. He also lost 2 Bettys, and in exchange, we lose... Uh, what did we lose here? Three Catalinas and a and a flying fortress. He also lost an Alf, a Val, a couple other things, some some minor stuff. Uh, twenty two to four. The only thing that's noteworthy here is the absolute uh, high attrition level of our PBY Catalinas. This is not sustainable. Um, I'm gonna have to really dig down deep and figure out why I'm losing so many trans uh, PBYs. We cannot afford to lose forty nine of these things. 18 of them. We don't have enough to lose like that. So I need to really figure out why I'm losing so many PBY fives. But th that's small potatoes compared to what Lodric lost here. 19 transport planes lost this turn. Uh, that would explain his anemic attack at Terracan. So um, we'll take a look at this. Looking at the top pilots for this turn, we lost no pilots. Of the four aircraft that were lost, none were uh, casualty producing. All right, looking down at the... Oh, we'll look at the pilot replacements for this turn. Looking at the group and wounded, as part of our 30-day check, we will go into the reserve next, but it looks like um, Lieutenant Junior Grade Wagner from the U.S. Navy VP-51 was wounded in action, so we're going to transfer to reserve, and we'll look from Wagner T to see what happens. So Wagner T, and these are now the reserve pilots with... Wagner T is coming back. In February which is great Tanner B still showing wounded so we'll give him a few more weeks but it's looking like these guys will never come back if they're wounded and they don't have a return date it's some music there it is army loss points did creep up on us last turn uh, due to the losses we sustained in Bandung and also Balak Poppin and those were more or less unavoidable Ship loss for this last turn, nothing. Again, no ship activity whatsoever, other than the fact that we had a Mark 14 fail on that sub near Japan. But no ships are reported as lost. Uh, the Japanese aren't fessing up to anything. Looking at the score for this turn, I do think that Lodric went up a bit. Looks like he's got about 1,700 point, uh, 3,700 points spread on us right now, more or less. 
Trekking is a minor victory, but this is not enough to win him the campaign unless he can get a 4-1 to advantage by March or January of 1943. So if we can hold him like this, uh, we'll be taking him into the late game because he won't be able to shut us out with the score spread like this. All right, let's press on looking at the SIGINT for this turn. Uh, a bit of reports here. We'll go through it quickly. Let's see here. Planning for an attack on Sion. Okay, but we kind of knew he was doing that anyway. Plan for attack on Changsha. Another one located at Changsha. These guys are planning for Changsha. Yeah, nothing, nothing overly, uh, overwhelmingly important on this thing here. We'll look at the combat report. Doesn't appear that he's cleared any mines or anything crazy happened here. Voyager, Voyager dodged six torpedoes. That was good. Okay, ops report. I will scroll through this and I'll report anything noteworthy to you. A lot of sightings is normal. Another B-17E was written off. Um, this is from our attack on Changsha. I need to call that off. Radio transmissions near Sydney. Okay, those are subs. We we know that. PBY five from VP fifty one crashes on landing. This is probably our wounded pilot here. Oh, transfer. Here we go. Here's where the fun starts. Transports flying to Terracan intercepted by number four five three squadron RAF, and this is where the kills start. Look at this. Two two three three six two. Three two two, four. He's just feeding us kills, man. Those uh, those Japanese transports are XP pinatas. And then it continues on. Another transport was intercepted by the Dutch, and he uh, we got a Dutch pilot even gets in on the action. Okay, we have some transports moving some RAF uh, aviation support into Rangoon. He captures Balak Poppin, which is kind of is a big deal. Uh, Mataram, we have some bases come up on some stuff. The Chester, which I got to Auckland, is beginning a refit while also under repair. So it's doing two for one. That's going to help us put some radar on that thing. This is a Northampton class, uh, one that I rescued from Numea. So we'll have that back in the fight in about 20 days. Okay, a couple more ships repaired at Numea. That's great. We got another destroyer on the map. A couple other transports on the map. A couple other, it looks like some reinforcements as well. So good good turn for reinforcements and ship activity. Um, let's go ahead and just start in China and I'll work our way around. So he still continues to press for Sion. And he's firing a lot of bombers at there too to try to slow us down. So it's a race to see who can get in and out of Sion quicker. Um, this is a massive force for sure. Uh, this is another one of Lodric's patented death stacks. So we really need to get out of town. So all these guys, I'm setting into move mode, but we're already behind the power curve on this. Oops, wrong way. That's it. We need to move quickly um, because we have to clear two hexes to get out of the way of this thing before he gets in there. So I'm going to continue evacuating as many troops as I can, but we run the risk of getting stuck here. So we got 2,100 there, uh, almost 3,500 AV in Sion, but it's not much when you consider we're on clear terrain. And if he has equal force and he shocks attacks, I don't know how that's going to go. We do have some fort there, but I don't know if it's enough. So we really need to evacuate quickly before he gets in here. It's any day before he crosses in here and shock attacks into Sion. And it's going to be a big mess when he does it. So I don't know how that's going to go. I really don't. We may be in for a bit of a struggle here. And down near Changsha, no activity. Uh, he's not bombarding. He's not doing anything. He did some some half-hearted air attacks at Changsha, but he actually did less damage than we were able to repair. This was in the 60s last time. We're down to the 30s. When that gets done to zero, we start rebuilding the fort. Um, so he's attacking the ancillary bases, trying to slow down reinforcements, but I think it would be better for him to continue attacking the base. That's my opinion. You may disagree, but... He needs to weaken this place a lot more if he wants to take it. Because what he's got here right now, 
I don't think can do it. He did grab Kukong last turn because we evacuated it, and now he inherited a base. It's pretty heavily damaged, but it's his. We have a long history of activity at Kukong, some ups and downs, some failed attacks. We really wanted to try to kill a lot of stuff there earlier in the campaign, and it didn't work out. It is what it is. It's kind of bittersweet me giving it up, but we gave it up for a good reason because it's just not a sustainable base to keep in supply. So it's his now after over two months of struggle at that place. And we'll see what he does with it next. That pretty much completes China for this turn. Looking at Rangoon, there's been absolutely zero activity from the Japanese here at all. No air attacks, no ships, no, no nothing, no ground troops. So we're taking the opportunity to move a lot of supplies. So we basically doubled the supply in Rangoon over this last turn. We had about 35,000 here last turn. Now we got 65,000. And we're unloading another 35. And on top of that, next turn I've got another 40 coming down. So Rangoon's going to be floating in supply. And it's going to be working its way down the Burma Road into China. And it will help our supply situation there. So uh, I think Logic really screwed up by not pressing the attack on Burma early on. And at this point, short of some sort of miracle where he brings 10,000 AV into Burma, I think it's too late. You know, if you look at Rangoon, we have 1477 there. We got a bunch further up the road. We got way more coming down the road. We're going to have 2,500 AV in Burma soon. And I... In defensive positions, I don't know if he can dislodge us. Knowing that he's got the bulk of his troops tied up here in China, I don't think he's got enough to do much here. So uh, I'm feeling really comfortable with our position in Burma. We do see some activity here. This looks like a, possibly a surface combat task force moving who knows where. We'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not overly concerned about it. Until we get more eyes on it, though, it's hard to know exactly what it is. It is moving northeast, which is towards Rangoon. He may be getting tired of our of our uh, supply convoys going in there. Maybe he's going to challenge it. But we do have some uh, surface task forces in the area that can can do something about it. So we'll see how this plays out. I'm not worried about it right now. So he did land at Osthaven, and if I understand how Lodric operates, I think his intent is to come up the road this way. I think he's a little uh, gun shy to doing a amphibious assault at Palembang. He may be worried about damaging it or the mines that we got there, any number of things. So he may be trying to just grab Osthaven and then take these troops here at Bandung once he neutralizes this and march them up this way. I believe that's what his plan is, but we'll have to see. He will inherit quite a bit of oil if and when he gets to that point, though. At Bandung, he neutralized us again. We're down to 300 AV there. I give it one or two more turns and we're finished here. I just don't see us being able to withstand a lot more of that. We're down to fort level one. He's got way more troops, way more power here. He also landed at Christmas Island, which, you know, it has a lot of resources. If that's why he wants it, that's fine. It could also be a good scouting asset for him if he can put some mavises or emily's here he can reach pretty far here which means that oil that we want to bring down from you know up here near uh abaddon we'll have to go really wide to stay out of range of that so this could be a good move for him it's worth a couple points and it can give him a, a good scouting base so not a bad move i'd i'd grab it too why not Elsewhere in the Dutch East Indies, it's quiet over here, but not so quiet on Borneo. So I call it a wash. We absolutely decimated his transports at Tirakan, um, which was great. But we lost Balak Poppin, which wasn't so great. As far as we can tell right now, he may have captured it without any damage. We'll have to give it a turn or two to see if we can get some better eyes on that. But if I'm reading this correctly, at this point... It does appear that he grabbed Palak Poppin, Palak Poppin with no damage. So he got a refinery level of 300, oil capacity 300, a great base, a great port, 
uh, this was a big win for him. And he didn't have to commit too many troops. I thought he would need more than that, but he didn't. So um, this is one of those few times where him coming in light worked out for him. Our troops were just too weak here to 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 really do anything about it. So congratulations to Lodrick for grabbing Balak Poppin. I'm really shocked it took him almost three months to do it, but it's his now. So now it's up to our subs to put up a good defense in the... Makassar straight and deny this port for him for his tankers that want to pull that out Again at Terracan we did great. So I want to just briefly explain something to you here because um, I did get some email traffic from Lodric. He is not happy at all With what went down at Terracan. So this is what he told me He said he had long-range cap operating over from basically from Miri at Terracan and he thought that that would somehow escort his um, transports, but it doesn't work that way. And I've, I did think it did, and I've confirmed it by talking to some people on my Discord, some seasoned vets. I explained the whole situation to them, and basically, uh, when you have long range cap, um, they may engage my cap, which of course I had a hundred cap. They may engage it. They may engage it on screen. They may engage it off screen. So your your long range cap can have a fight off screen where you don't see the actual animation. But there is really nothing you can do to escort your actual transports. The transport, the air transport phase is separate from the air phase. So your long range cap does not persist past the PM phase. So the way the game works, and you can call it a, a, a hole in the code, working as intended, I don't really know. But the air transports come in after the fighters have done their work for the day. So the better approach for Lodric in this situation would have been for him to use his fighters in a sweep and try to sweep our fighters out of the way first. He didn't do that. He used long range cap and it didn't pan out for him. So when his, when his transports went in on the air transport phase, he had 30 some odd fighters up in cap and we sliced and diced them. So that's what happened here. So let this be a lesson to you guys. If you're new players and you want to do an air assault, you cannot go in unless you have absolute air superiority. If there's one enemy fighter there, it's a risk. Um, unless you're certain that the fighters won't be there, don't send your transports because you cannot escort them. There is no mechanic in this game for you to escort your transport planes. It does not work that way. You would think that it should and it would, but it does not. So the only thing you can really do here is to sweep. Sweep the target for several days. Because that gives you at least two phases to engage enemy fighters in cap. I think that would have worked out a lot better for him. But he chose to, to do a long-range cap, and the game mechanics don't work in that way. So they were completely ineffective. They did not ever run into my cap. There was no air battle there with the fighters because it wasn't a sweep. So the AM and the PM phase of the air combat went by. And my fighters were still there untouched. So when the air transport phase came by, my cap s destroyed them. So again, these poor guys at Terrigan are completely just, uh, they're, they're, they're done for. Now, I don't know if I have enough troops to actually attack them and kill them. But they definitely don't have the power to attack us. So um, we're just going to wait it out. We're in no rush here. We... We make our own supply at Terracan, so there's absolutely no reason to to do anything. We just kind of hang out. And in the meantime, we have these guys that are now racking up kills. Look at that. 2, 4, 15, 23, 7. I'm making aces over here. So, Lodric, you better bring some more fighters, bud. Um, no, more, no more transport planes because we just killed them all. And in the future, for you guys, again, I'll reiterate it. If you want to ensure that your transports have a fighting chance of making it in, sweep the target. Don't long range cap. Don't do anything else. And if at all possible, just don't send them. Unless you know for a fact, 100% fact, that I have no fighters or, or your enemy has no fighters over the base that you're trying to land at, don't send the transports or this will happen to you. All right, moving on. Philippines, he's grabbing some more bases in these islands, which is fine. Uh, the killers of Kagayan are still not um, into the next hex yet, which I don't really understand. They're taking their sweet time here. It's because he keeps bombing us. Ugh. He keeps slowing us down here. 
So we're slowly working our way back to Cagayan. Out here in Australia, absolutely dead quiet. Nothing to report. Uh, now we can talk about something around here. We did have a sub-intercept somewhere around here near Sydney, but we we were able to get through it. And now we have these three damaged uh, light cruisers from Numea. We made it safely back. These were all damaged in the air attack a few weeks ago. So now what we can do is disband this task force and we can take a look at what needs to be repaired. So the Perth we're going to put into the shipyard. So it looks like it's going to be 14 days no matter what. That's fine. The Achilles going into the shipyard. 20 days. We can get it to 14. I'll take that. That's, that's not bad at all. And the Leander going into shipyard. Looks like we can get that done in 10 days. So if we take a look at it. Well, okay. I see what's happening here. Um, it's it's increasing because I have so many ships in the shipyard and they're all going critical. So what we'll do is we'll take the Leander, we'll put him in pier side repair, and let's see if that helps. All right, let's take the Achilles, put him into normal. That gets uh, 20 and 20. I like that better. So we'll do that. So it looks like. Uh, and then at some point, we'll have to move this back in the shipyard to take this major damage down. But um, the pier side repair will knock down all non-major damage. And this will make it quicker to repair it. So it looks like in about 20 some odd days, we'll have... Uh, 20 to 30 days, we'll have three of our light cruisers back fully operational. So that's excellent. All right. So let's talk about what's happening here. So his task force is moving now towards Lord Howe. I do have ships here, and I think we're going to move out of here because we're now spotted, um, and it's no longer safe to go to Lord Howe, so we're going to continue on to Sydney. Everything's going to Sydney. These guys going to Sydney. These guys, we're going to go ahead and cancel the unloading, and we are going to Sydney because we have these guys bearing down on us, and it's just not safe anymore. So I'm moving all these guys out of here. He only has like 15 bombers, but it only takes one bomb to kill a ship, you know. It can be unlucky. So I do want to continue evacuating everything that's loose out here. I do want to also talk about this poor ship out here, the John D. Ford. It is getting worse. It's going to sink probably with the next turn. So I am going to go ahead and make the call to scuttle it now. Check out this little blue box that comes up. It looks like it was like an after effect. Maybe uh, a beta or so. I don't know. Something put this in way after the game was made to make it look like this, but we're going to scuttle the ship because it will deny him some points. It's gone. We just scuttled our ship. There was no way we we're going to save it. It was just going to burn to the ground. So instead of him getting five points, um, he only gets four because you, you take 10% of some 10% to 20% less points if you scuttle it yourself. So we basically denied him a whole whopping point. So we'll see what he does out here. He has very little combat power and he's going to run out of fuel and, um, Fuel and sorties at some point here, and we can resume moving ships back into to, to Nemea. Elsewhere up here, we don't see a whole lot other than the fact that we know he's got aircraft and ships at Tulagi. We do see a, a couple big task forces at Rabal. We don't really know what they are or what they're doing. We have these guys moving back, uh, allegedly maybe retreating back this way. Hopefully these subs can make something happen in all these search hexes, right? And we also have this uh, task force with the battleships, the heavy cruisers, and at least 23 fighters operating at Luganville. One nice thing, we were able to salvage the Dolphin. So we're going to have it in pier side repair. And we'll go ahead and start working down the system damage and this flotation damage. Once we have this below 50... I feel comfortable moving it off the island back towards Kumok or even Numea or, or just straight back to Brisbane for permanent repair. But it does look like the Dolphin's going to make it. So once again, our track record of saving damaged subs is more or less untouched. So that basically completes the turn here. 
Um, I think I'll just kind of scroll around real quick and see if we see anything else on the map that's noteworthy. Not really seeing much. Yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. I really want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the slaughter at Terracan. I'm pretty sad about Balak Poppin falling, but it was bound to happen at some point. I'm surprised it took this long. But Lodric does have a fair amount of oil at his disposal now at Miri and also at Balak Poppin. He's got a little bit of oil here at Terracan. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, by but not much. And then the the real jewel of this whole thing is going to be Palembang. And it's it's just a matter of time before he he comes to take it. So that'll be the next big base that we need to watch out for to fall. And then he'll have all the oil he's probably going to get. And we'll see what his next, his next moves are. So as always, I want to thank you guys for supporting me in this campaign and Lodric. If you're not on my Discord, I please invite you to come join us because we got 150 people there now. Uh, if you'd like more access, if you want to see behind-the-scenes stuff for my campaign or his campaign or even Helson's campaign in my other uh, set, you can do that at my Discord because we've got special channels for that. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching this, and I'll catch you in the next one.